Hello and welcome for today's video. Today we have a replay of Enfurio who is playing as Algeria against Barbaros who is playing as Turkey. As you surely might know these are both nations that don't have a balloon. So this is probably going to be very interesting considering Algeria also has a little bit of a disadvantage against Turkey. So that's only in the late game. Anyway, 5k resources, uh, no peacetime. And there's probably also no capture. Either that or only no passive capture. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no capture though, because this is a fun game, I think. No capture. My sources have informed me that there's no capture. Therefore, we will probably not see a lot of siege action. And instead, more real action with real men. <laughs> well, uh, real men in that case, more like swordsmen. At least for Manfurio, he's starting to churn out the Algerian swordsmen. Our choice. Normally people tend to go archers with Algeria. The diplomatic center is definitely on. So they might switch over. Or they are going for a rush. Since there is no peacetime. It's quite possibly to... It, quite possibly. Quite possible to rush the enemy just with simple infantry hordes. Which is also a valid... Or was rather a valid strategy in team games. Um... Before anybody asks, this is the classical disclaimer that I'm not call of it, and I will never be, and, and I will never be call of it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, anyway, now Enfurio is also building some archers, some fire support. He is starting to claim his gold mines, two of them have been claimed so far. Probably doesn't have a sideline on the other two. No, quite certainly not. And Barbaros is going with the Ottoman pikemen. They are also pretty good in that they are pretty strong. They have more health than normal pikemen, I think. They just lack the armor, which in this case isn't really important because, well... Algeria doesn't really have any gun gunmen. And therefore, uh, that doesn't really make a difference. Un unless somebody gets cannons, which might be possible, but it's not really likely, I, th I think. We'll see it though, we'll see. And Furio is sending the first uh, group of infantrymen and archers. They don't have a formation. And Furio is also struggling on food right now, but that's gonna fix itself. At least for time. And Barbaros is building the diplomatic center. Which Furio already has, but he does not seem to be using. Ah, he does use it. He just he's just out of housing. A classical issue with Turkey and Algeria, if you try to do the spam tactic. You're very likely to get house very quickly. And uh, houses do get more expensive with time. Doesn't mean that they are cheap in the beginning. They are quite expensive actually. But they are a needed and necessary evil to take when you're playing as these nations. Earlier so than with other nations because everybody gets house eventually. So what's going on? Barbaros is building infantrymen and archers. A group of archers for, for fire support and infantry for, in, for, for well, melee support. Uh, whilst uh, Amfuru is actually going with round shears and grenadiers. Grenadiers for blowing up buildings and the round shears for protecting. Well, basically the same rule, the same roles as Barbaros has with his archers and infantrymen. Though grenadiers are more deadly against buildings in the long haul though have a shorter range. They also have decent capabilities for melee, but they are very fragile. You don't want them to get into melee range, actually. Unless you have, like, ground shears or something that can tank the punch. Otherwise, not a good idea. Their shooting power is uh, quite quite nice to have, but only against ar unarmored soldiers, which Barbaros has. He doesn't have armor, so that might be... Well, a little bit of a disadvantage, but not too big. Their fire rate is very slow. And Furio seems to be going to the sites looking for some mines. He, at least he has a peasant there. Well, I don't know why he only has one peasant, though. <laughs> he's also looking for the mines on the bottom side, which uh, he's actually trying to build with some peasants. They're currently coming down the, the map. His uh, first push group is now marching forward, whilst Barbaros' first army is going through the middle. 
Uh, yeah, if Barbaros just keeps going straight ahead, he might do a lot of damage. On the other hand, Barbaros' base is currently rather undefended against them, against them furious, uh advancing groups. They are advancing from two directions, which makes them uh, have a little bit of an advantage, because uh, Barbaros either has to fall back or split up. And both is not really good for him. It's both gonna work in Infurious favor. As you can see, Infurious now blowing up one of Barbaros' mines. And he's also pushing into Barbaros' economy, while Barbaros' main army is trying to chase down the Grenadiers. The diplomatic center is falling. Now the peasants are going to fall. He's not sending them for a counterattack. He probably didn't notice this. Uh, yeah, the peasants are all dead. But he managed to kill the archers, which is the main thing here. He almost lost his town hall, but not quite. There are still some archers left though, so that might be a bit of a concern. In the meantime, Barbaros' army has, has arrived at Anfurio's base, but they have been uh, significantly reduced in numbers, as well as they are not, not really fighting back. They are just retreating and losing men for no apparent reason. <laughs> Ah, but that's not to say that Anfurio got an easy win. There are a lot of red bodies there. Not as much as one could get, but it's always something. Now we have a Barbaros whose economy is kind of crippled with an Anfurio who is ready to go. Oh, this doesn't look good. He's got to utilize the power of the kebab really fast. Maybe some some sipahi would be a good idea. Specifically the, the armored ones. As Empurio is using swordsmen, and the armored sipahi have a natural armor, so they are pretty good against swordsmen. With the addition that they also deal sword damage, which is also pretty effective against these. Not as much against the uh, round shears, but they are still better against them than the uh, ones with the spear, the light sipahi. Though they have a way longer pr production time, so they might only be useful if he somehow manages to get the build time upgrade. Which is not likely at this point anymore. Or at least not right now. Not being careful enough, Barbaro seems to have lost a hefty amount of soldiers to Anfurio's army in the north. Though that looks only like it's actually just uh, infantry mercenaries now engaging the army, or at least the, the section of it. Pretty easy win. The Ottoman pipemen are not to be joked with. They are pretty powerful and they have good upgrades. Though on the paper, Enfurio has more upgrades on his infantrymen than Barbaros has on his pikemen. Although Enfurio lacks all the defense upgrades pretty much, only has the, the, melee, the melee power upgrades, but it's always something. Especially considering how many Grenadier backup he has for fire support. They can do a lot of damage. Even though they, they are essentially gonna instantly die as soon as they get into melee range with the pikemen, as seen. And Furio is starting to churn out the Dragoons. The mercenary Dragoons, very deadly. Very expensive as well. It looks like he's trying to build 60 of these. Essentially, it's a game of whoever makes the Dragoons first wins. If somebody has Dragoons, you need Dragoons to counter them, or a lot of Grenadiers, which is a very expensive and a very dangerous affair, because of the, fu the fire rate of the Dragoons is very high, and they have a lot of firepower. They can, they can kill the mercenary Grenadier in two shots, which means uh, they're just gonna evaporate everything. Barbaros manages to defend, to defend his base. Not a surprise there, the infantrymen now start to be a, a liability for Anfurio. He still chooses to produce them, probably because he does keep in mind that he now has Dragoons in the making, and he essentially only needs fodder with those. The carrying, the punch force is being delivered by the Dragoons, not the infantrymen at this point. 
Ah, but Barbarus is also making dragoons now. Uh, and a lot, a lot more of those. He's gonna build 160 or something of those. Yeah, pretty much 160. <laughs> if he manages to hold off Bar and Furio long enough, then he manages. Then he should be managed to to fight him off rather easily. Uh, visual book. And where? Oh. Well, apparently there's a visual book in the Diplomatic Center of Barbarus, so I don't actually know how many he builds. But I can say that on my screen, it looked like he was producing 160 of those. I don't know how it looks on the video, you can you control this hit yourself. I am just talking here. <laughs> Ah, and Furio is flanking Barbaros with his dragoons, whilst the infantrymen are retreating, which is causing a lot of casualties for Barbaros. Because he can't focus his fodder and his dragoons are also all spread out. Very dangerous, Barbaros is out of ammunition. And he ha has a lot of food, he's not trading it. Is something going on? This is also a visual book. Does he, just have, he does have a market, but he's not using his resources. Well, that's all. Maybe he just forgot. <laughs> Won't be the first time somebody forgets his trades. Looking at you there, color. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. He also has a lot of food, which he isn't really putting to use. Not buying any additional ammo because he's also rather short on it. And also not buying any gold. Although then again, the Algerian barracks don't need gold. They only need wood and stone. Which I think he could build another one if he just traded his food. Still no trading going on. Barbarus has a lot of wood. Looks like we are in the morning. What? Uh, um, no trading going on though. What's going on? Something feels fishy. Not in the fish league way. It's not delicious. Mm, some of Barbarossa's pipe men going into suicide. Probably just lack of attention right there, but uh, well, shit happens. Uh, ah, now when Furio traded his, his food for something. Maybe able? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> something at least. Maybe ammo? It looks like he has more ammo now, I don't know. I didn't pay attention. I, go, I only have so many eyes and so many screens. Mm, Barb was now making the red... The, the red shears, yeah. That's the, that's the round shears that also throw grenades, by the way. <laughs> uh, round shears is now building round shears to counter the dragoons. Smart move. Also necessary. Ah, and Furio now has Mamluks with his army. People will know what I, am, what I mean when I say that the Mamluks always lose against the Ottomans. Otherwise... Well, inside jokes and stuff. But no stable from Barbaros yet. And still no trading activity. He has a hundred thousand food now. What's he doing? I mean, uh, I mean, it's fine if he forgets, but... Forgetting this long... I mean, you should eventually notice the number that it's got getting so big. Hmm. Well, maybe it's a visual book and I'm just talking on my ass. <laughs> You'll see on the video for sure. Furio is housed. And he doesn't build any houses yet. He doesn't seem to have noticed yet. I'm right, he is not trading. What's going on? Hmm. Well, Barbaros, if you see this video, 
uh, maybe you can learn from your mistakes and try it next time. Or write it down or something. Get a paper. Pen and paper always help somebody learn more stuff. Not me, but surely somebody else. <laughs> It's always a good time to learn. And what better way to learn than from your own mistakes? Ah, and Furious now once more butchering and Barbaros' peasants while it's mustering a large army on, on the left side of his base. But the Barbaros has an equally large army, though with a uh, with a with a great lack of any ranged support, only 14 dragoons, which Empurio has uh, well, 31. Looks like I was wrong. Ah, but Barbaros is making 200 grenadiers. Unless it's also visual glitch, in which case. Welp. What can I do? And still no trading. Also, no trading from Empurio. He also has 100,000 food now, and he doesn't bother to build any houses. This is odd. Even if this is just a friendly game, one would expect people to... ...do something. Ah, and Furio is building artillery depots while it's being housed. Well... Priorities, I suppose. <laughs> Barbaros is now also housed. But he's still not doing anything with this great amount of wealth. What a shame. Uh, apparently, Imperio only went out to build his artillery depots and then just went back to work. This feels fishy, man. This doesn't feel right. Is this really what ha what's happening right now? Because it sure doesn't feel right. At least not to me. Maybe the video has something correct, but I'm confused. Maybe it's just my perception, but this doesn't seem correct. Oh boy. Ah, and Furious' main army managed to fail against Barbaros. This, this is the power of the Ottoman pikemen. Because and Furio is still only making infantrymen. Maybe this is all part of Barbaros' great master plan to rush the Janissary upgrades. With a great amount of wealth out of nowhere. Which wouldn't make sense because it doesn't even have the Ottoman pikemen fully upgraded yet. Huh. This is certainly a, a strange game. Or maybe this is just a, some sort of last stand scenario. But he did build a stable finally. Barbaros did build a stable finally. Not that he will be using it. <laughs> ah well, not the first time people forget about the stables. I do. I did also forget about my stables several times. Sending peasants to the front line? No, not. He's not. He's. Sending him back. Hmm. At least Infurio is using his wealth. He bought gold, which he's probably going to use for. Yeah, for what exactly? I thought the stables need gold, but apparently I was wrong. No, no, that's only normal nations. It's been a while since I played this. Over a year. And probably over two years since I played it properly. Furio building the mosque. Building, uh, also building, yeah. Sure, you, you're building a priest. Also producing mullahs. Probably to, to help his um, army stay alive a little bit longer. Give them some extra punch force. Because the mullahs can also heal while the soldiers are in battle. Would be a good idea if you. Barbaros is building another another town hall. Still not using his food. Is he building? Is he trying to play a challenge run right now? 
no use in the market or something? It feels like it. The no market challenge. That's something I call a future play. Eight, well, not eight. Seven impossible AIs for this call of it to to use the market. Comment below if you want to see that. <laughs> and Fuyu now has the cannon support. He has the upper hand and well everything now. Barbara was falling back. Mm, he's also building artillery depots now, but it's a bit too late. Unless he can manage, or unless he manages to stall the advance for long enough, which is uh, difficult at this point, because the cannons give so much extra firepower, he can just keep pressing the advantage as, as fast as the cannons can go, which in itself is a challenge, because cannons are very slow, as you might expect. Now, and Furio is standing in front of the hill, letting Barbarus take the hill. Advantageous position. Not as much because uh, he's also charging the hill. The Grenadiers can't shoot as efficiently. Oh boy, and the uh, Barbaros are not having a good time on this hill. The archers are, 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 are doing quite a lot of work here. But Barbaros reigns supreme on this fight and can push him back while still amassing incredible wealths of food. Man, China would love to trade with you. Or with the Soviet Union for that matter. <laughs> I'm just taking the piss. <laughs> ah, peasants in the army for Enfurio. They are a decent way to add some additional fodder. They also have good, good, good combat cap cap capabilities. If they get close enough, which is difficult. <laughs> Simply because they are so squishy and have a very low melee range. And through used to rook him back. Well, the, the good old base defense advantage. Oh boy, it is really already going on for 30 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't even feel like that much. Ah, the Barbarous cannons are also being built. Got some upgrades for them, but didn't trade any food for it. <laughs> Where is he taking all these resources from? Like, I'm not noticing him trading any food, it just gets more and more. I mean, I do get that after a while, you're just gonna run, run out of options for your trades. As Algeria and Turkey because of the lack of gold but um, could try something more gold or something for example Janissaries would be a great addition at this point but he is using his upgrades now also he hasn't played in a while um, maybe that's why a bit rusty well it happens everybody gets rusty after a while Still though, um, I don't think that being rusty is, uh, is an explanation for not trading. <laughs> no ill will or anything, but it's just um, questionable to me. Now we're gonna have a cannon slot battle. Unless Enfurio feels especially bold today and just attacks, which would, which he will probably you lose. Actually, no, no, he might win it. Ottoman pikemen are good, but they're not good enough when they're outnumbered four to one. There we go. This is the fight. 
No dragoons on either side, only grenadiers, cannons, and infantry. The upper side is being won by Barbaros, the lower side is being won by Infurio. A classic side in these, in these types of long line battle. It'd be funny if this game actually incorporated line battle like American Conquest, but planted everything. Need a remake of that, man. <laughs> Uh, Barbaros has won. Close. But he has won. I don't think he will be able to capture the cannons or destroy them. If anything, then I think that Empurio will probably capture or destroy his cannons. Which also doesn't seem too likely right now. The Grenadiers are just too numerous. They can protect the cannons. Actually, one, one cannon was captured by the priest. Well, I guess you could call this the holy holy howitzer. Not to be confused with the holy hand grenade. Ah, he keeps pushing, but it's not uh, very useful because of Amphurius' reinforcements being so numerous. That's one advantage, at least, of the infantrymen. If you keep streaming them into the enemy, they're going to overwhelm whatever is left. If the enemy didn't have much left after the battle to begin with. They can just float it over then. Otherwise, not a good idea. Should probably stop producing those. <laughs> Archer spam is a good alternative. Because they are... Uh, they have a good power. Can't they one-shot most infantrymen? If they hit, I don't remember. Uh, he, he, he tries to push back and he somehow manages it with great difficulty. Oh, he captured some of the cannons. This might be big. No, but they're just being recaptured actually. Uh, that's a shame. If he could have destroyed these cannons in time, then he would have probably been good to go for, for re-push at this. Actually, some of the cannons behind the lines are captured as well, and they're just shrapneling each other. Actually, quite hilarious to watch. Oh, the cannons seem to have been lost or destroyed by Emporio and captured by Barbaros. For the moment, they don't seem to be able to, to decide what to do right now. Oh, but the shrapnel, the shrapnel shots. The grape shots. They are nasty against Algeria, or Turkey for that matter. Lack of armor really stings. Especially when multi-barrel multi cannons, or, or, or well, close combat cannons are involved. Actually, the latter hurts, hurts for everybody because cannons in close quarter, the, the grape shot, also tends to kill armored units with one shot. At least from my experience. Not as many though on distance, but still quite a few. It just falls off more quickly. It's going for for a counter push. Building another artillery depot. Oh, so he is using the heavy zipper here, here Barbaros. Uh, the second stable is not doing anything just yet. What is that for what you're doing? He has... Oh, he got his third barracks. Good investment. Even though it's not operating right now, because ah, it's upgrading the archers. So he does try to change into into archer mass production, to some degree at least. Otherwise, Mamluks, logically, Algeria doesn't have anything else but Mamluks. Barbaros is losing his counter push, simply because Enfurio has so many soldiers. The heavy zipper here are doing their best. 
with their with their um, enormous resistances and quite effectiveness against Anthurious troops, but they are bested, at least in these low numbers. Interesting to know, Barbaros does actually have a Curious upgrade. Which one though? It's the Academy one. So he does actually have some extra protection against guns and something. Guns or something on his zip At least the armored ones, you get the idea. Small skirmishes around the middle. Easy one by Infurio because of his Mamluk support. He grape shot his own men there. But it didn't really kill many Mamluks. Though it almost killed them. Yeah, he's trying for a push, but the way this looks, it does not look like this is going to be the game ender right now. This is still good to go for a while. The second stable from Barbaros is also making heavy CPA now. He can afford the how the, the, the cavalry production speed upgrade. Hopefully he's gonna invest into that because the heavy seat by here have a, have a long, long production time. Uri already has his, has his upgrade, which means that his Mamluks are going to be very efficient here. Barbaros has 700,000 food, which is worth noting, I suppose. And through your soul on a thousand, he's catching up rather quickly. Maybe this isn't about the fight. Maybe this is all a deeper meaning. It's a, it's a fight against hunger, against world hunger and overpopulation. The things you can learn in this game. Damn. This is getting philosophical. Bubble is reclaiming some of his lost minds now. Quite late, but better, better now than never. Or better late than never? Or some, something around those lines. He has researched the wheel lock. He is researching fire rate upgrades. But he's not researching any janissary upgrades. What's he planning? And Furio is going onto, onto a hill. With an advantageous position for his cannons. Uh, Barbarus is trying to counter this by moving his men around. In a loose formation thanks to the cavalry. Having cavalry in your army makes your it makes all of your units spread out more. Because it actually calculates all of your units to be to be horsemen, which are which have a bigger statue. Might be worth noting. In case you didn't know. Pretty good for avoiding cannon fire casualties. Cannons are battling it out. It appears like all night of them seem to have any good upgrades, at least not only health. Mm -hmm. I don't think either of them also have either have any upgrades. Quite truly. Yeah, I think that Emporio has one accuracy upgrade. And um, Barbarus. Barbarus is not. Oh, I missed the battle. Dang it. At least it's still going on. It looks like Infuria is gonna win this with ease, though. Oh, not so much, actually. The grape shot again. The bloody grape shot. Wasn't for the grape shots from the cannons, this would have been over. Three fourth or something. Cannons are glitching out on my screen. But that's normal for cannons, they always do that. Hmm. I'm not so cl not so decisive a win as I thought. Barbarus might be able to push and throw your back here with his base support. Because it's still his base, it's still the home advantage. Though he doesn't have any ammo.
Yeah, I was good. I'm not trying to trample on any on anyone here. I don't try to bat up anybody, but Barbaros has a million food. This must be some sort of challenge. I don't think this is being rusty or forgetting. It must be some sort of challenge to look how good can he do without using a market. And to be honest, very well. I must admit. At least for not using a market. Seemingly, he might use the market and that I might just not be noticing it. But it looks like he's not using it, and for that, he's doing very well. Hats off for you, man. Barbaros is upgrading his mines. I think he's upgrading his gold mines for some extra gold production, which is always a good thing. Can build more dragoons. They are not that the size of at this point anymore, but they are still a valid, um, a valid support unit. Especially because Algeria and Turkey, as mentioned on the start, don't have armor. Anything going on here? Mm. No, nothing going on. And Furio's house as usual. He has a fourth barrack though, which is not currently being used. He's probably going to try and make archer with those. As soon as he notices that it is. He has a lot of gold, which is not very meaningful as Algeria or Turkey. They don't use a lot of gold. <clears throat> he could invest this into a lot of ragoons though. Still only Ottoman pikemen from Barbaros. Reasonable, he does not have a good ammo income. The cannons are eating most of his ammo. <laughs> oh, that's the size of loss though. And the cannons are being captured. Or are they? Nope, he manages to destroy the cannons. Or most of them at least. Oh no, that's just the glitching old screen again. No, no, it's not. Those cannons were there. Oh, but he captured them beforehand. Well, that makes sense then. And Furio is pushing forward. I think if this attack doesn't do it... This is just going to end up being a back and forth all the time. Well, I don't mind that. I'm not here to talk on the back and forth all the time. <laughs> because after a while, I'm just going to run out of things to talk about, and then I'm just going to curse you with really bad jokes. As I do. Is gathering some extra forces, but so is Barbarus. Maybe uh, he's, but he is using his cannons to soften Barbarus the a bit. If this is going smoothly, this might be the game set and match. We'll see though. And Furio is very rich, he has a lot of resources. Barbarus is uh, very, very well fed. But I give the credit, being well fed is also a good thing. Don't want to go to bed hungry after all. Mm. Barbaros is currently standing in the wrong position though. But it's fair, he doesn't actually know where his army is. Now he does. And uh, he's still standing in the wrong way. <laughs> but to give him credit, Enfurio is actually flanking, which is a smart move for Enfurio, and a difficult situation to handle for Barbaros. And the bar 
Papa Barracks. <laughs> Papa Barracks has fallen. And the big battle. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's gonna end the world for Barbaros. This might be the game sort of match. Especially since the pikemen are not engaging. Ooh, the point defense. Can you do it? Can the cannons pull it over? Well, the melee units are all dead, but it's for both sides. The archers are still there, but archers are fairly fragile. So, we have another attack that was deflected. Oh dear. Hope we can finish this before I get to eat something. <laughs> or get something to eat, rather. Currently, the reinforcements of Anfuri are still on the way. He didn't stream them in all the time. Probably because he was housed. His houses are not that expensive. He could build a couple more. He's probably saving up for another barracks, though. Could build some stables. Cavalry at this point is probably better than more archers or infantrymen. Although, admittedly, the Mamluks don't, don't really have any cannon protection. And uh, overall, not really useful against the heavy Sipahi. Well, actually they are. But the Sipahi are not fully upgraded yet, so there's that. No Smithy upgrades from Barbaros. Hmm. It's kind of funny. Barbaros doesn't have a lot of upgrades. But Emporio still still manages to keep uh, being fent off. Maybe that's in part due to the squishy nature of the infantrymen. But uh, pretty good, pretty good thing, good performance. Barbara's now taking out some of the border map, the border border map mines of Emporio. And we have, well, and we have passed the one hour mark in the game, not in the video. The video is probably like 45 minutes long or something now. Still a pretty, pretty chunky boy, <laughs> as we'd say. And Fubrio is spamming towers all over the place. Well, all over the southern place, rather. What's the middle? He's even building a tower on the hill. <laughs> oh, but Barbaros' army is being shelled now. Well, that's a tower gone, and that almost done as well. That's gonna have smart. Uh, oh, okay, they're not glitched. It looked like his heavy seat they were glitched in their attack animations in the forest, but they did in fact kill something. Probably a Mamluk. And here we go for the next great battle. How this is gonna go? Only time will tell. But we do know that the flood of infantrymen can be killed by the shrapnel shot, by grape shots. For now it looks like the battle has been won once more by Barbaros. Only the archers are left, and the archers are w very weak against the heavy Sipai, and also pretty f squishy against the grenadiers. Especially that, considering they don't target the latter right now. They could one shot the grenadiers, of course, but they don't target them right now, so that's a diff difficult situation. Oh, you're making a comeback with his uh, reinforcements from the hill. Did he build the tower there? Oh no, it was that a hill. Maybe he built a tower on that hill as well. Who knows. And the first tower has been built. It is also already get getting to work.
That was in this game are so nice. Unfortunately, they're not very useful most of the time. Because they don't have the same range as cannons do. So they are very limited in their abilities. Still go to deter, to deter infantry assaults though. If they are built in time. Barbaros is now collecting his army at his base. And Infurio is collecting his army at his hill. Not really surprising, really. Let's have a look about the upgrades. Barbaros has a lot of firepower upgrades. He is currently researching the, the granular gunpowder. And he's also started to research the, the Janissary upgrades. And he's also queuing up Janissaries now. Finally! I must say, finally! Still not trading any food though. <laughs> so still very well fed. We're not gonna go to bed hungry tonight. Uh, no stay um, of course there are stable upgrades, but he didn't do any smithy upgrades yet. And Furio is starting to produce a few Ottoman pikemen. Probably to give him a lot of extra punch. Also building a lot, a lot of towers despite being housed, he could use some more houses instead. <laughs> Let's have a look see. Be heavy, sit but he don't have the full upgrade potential. But at least he's using all of his stables. As long as he has three stables I'm not, and I'm not missing one. Four artillery depots, three are active. He's cut on artillery anyway. I think you will never actually need more than more than two artillery depots if you want to produce artillery. At least to keep a constant flow of cannons. If you want to rapidly produce cannons, more is always better. Of course, but uh, logically speaking, two should be enough. And especially with all the upgrades. Ah, now these now the heavy seat by uh, have more upgrades. They have their full attack potential. Not their full defense potential yet, but that'll come. Ah, he did research the sabers from the smithy. Not the harnesses yet, but they might follow soon. The Janissary is almost ready. Probably too late though. He should switch his production from Ottoman Pikeman to Janissary fully now, at least in my opinion. I used to be the great king kebab, after all. Until Turkey was banned from the games. <laughs> then I was... Someone. Maybe. <laughs> ah, the good old days. Ah, the great battle. It's very spread out. The archers of Imperial are devastating Bar Bar Barbaros' army. He doesn't have enough firepower to defend off the uh, Mamluks. And this amount of archers is actually a critical mass that might do something. If nothing else, at least protect the cannons, because that's a lot of guns. That's uh, over 30 cannons right there. Oh, no, no, but he's losing it. Mm. 
Ah, Barbaros managed to, to win yet again. The Janissary upgrades are fully done. Oh no, actually not. One more at attack upgrade and he's also building defense upgrades, which are not that useful. But, well, they are still nice to have. Especially if the Mamluks somehow get to, uh, get, get to pass the lines and attack them instead. They can hold out for a while longer. Still no cavalry production speed upgrade. That's a massive handicap, but he is still managing well. Even though Infurio has like double or uh, three times the cavalry by now. At least most of the time. Let's see. Mamluk production time is eight. And the heavy seat by is 18. Yeah. Yeah. Double the cavalry seems fair. See, is he building more Janissaries now? No, no, still some Ottoman pikemen. For this one, the Janissaries were, were once quicker to build. Or was it longer? 8 seconds seems a bit longer than what I remember. Oh well. And the next battle. This one is going to be a loss by Barbaros. It's pretty clear to see because um, there's reinforcements and they are coming in. He is uh, sustaining quite a lot of casualties. But that will matter, he has the hill and he has the advantage. And he even has a tower on it, which has quite a few upgrades. And also kind of sometimes looks like the tower shoots arrows as well. Oh, we only an arrow tower with cannons on it. Barbaros lost this in the end, but he is starting to use Janissaries, and the Janissaries are doing a great job of taking down Infurios' army. They can one-shot the archers, which is a very big deal right here. It's 100% increase in efficiency, because well, one shot is better than two shots. And, um, well, they don't need to wait. Um. Hmm. Yeah. They don't need to wait for the second shot to kill the uh, the target of the enemy. They can just go for the next one afterwards, and that can snowball quite quickly if the army is full of one shots. <laughs> And Fury was upgrading all of his towers. Luckily for him, tower upgrades are rather cheap. So he, they are pretty affordable. Logically, because they're cheap. Duh. <laughs> Let's see if Barbaros can breach a 2 million food mark before this battle ends. Ends. Furio has 37 cannons, which is a really big thing. He can just take take uh, Barbaros' army apart if he wants. If we will push right now, there's a good chance he will win. Simply because of the artillery support. He doesn't need to attack, he just needs to whittle them down. And keep doing that, and that way he could basically win passively. A pacifist victory. A few of you have died, but this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Hmm. 
Well, to be frank, I'm running out of things to talk about. Not a lot is happening in the base development anymore. Except for Fury having five barracks now. Otherwise... Well... What to talk about. So I hope you can apologize my... Um, sporadic silence. Is it sporadic? Is it the right use of it? Occasional. Occasional silence. Let's say it like that. Well, there are some cannonballs sitting into Barbaros's mine. Well, that's not Barbaros's mine, it's Infurious mine. And Infurio is re readying for the attack. You must have seen Barbaros trying to build some towers. This attempt was interrupted. And the battle begins. But this is a large amount of Infurio soldiers. And with the cannon support, this does not look at good at all for Barbaros. At least the Janissaries are doing a lot of work here against the Mamluks. Can't forget that the headshot immunity only counts against the um, light cavalry. As far as I know. Or headshot immunity, critical shot rather. I think the headman can survive one. But I'm not sure. Pretty known that the Ukraine is boosted in this game. Anyway, Enfurio has won. With a large army left. If he keeps going, this is a game over. Even though there's a lot of turrets on Barbarossa's side, none of them are upgraded. They are all very slow at shooting. And whilst they shoot and do a lot of damage, they are gonna take a whole E to reload. And Furu is choosing to stay back a bit, probably to muster some reinforcements. Maybe some more dragoons, maybe some more archers, who knows. I certainly don't, we'll see. And now he's moving in. Shooting the cannons at these weak spots, probably on the towers. Attempting to hit some... Oh, no, not the towers, he's actually trying to hit the, the soldiers of Barbarus. Yeah, this is a decisive victory for Imperial. Even more decisive than I would have thought. Barbaro should have stayed in his base, to be honest, even though the towers... Even though Imperial has cannons. It's a difficult situation. You either go in and die, or you fall back and... Die. Well, I don't really think that anybody could have had a situation to get out of this. Or, or a plan to get out of this, rather. Not even the great or mighty call of it. Which disclaimer, I am not. I will not tell who I am. Only those who are worthy can uh, can take a guess on who I am. Of course, and call of it commenting on the on this. He bet he could. He bet he could find a way to get out of this. Well, you know as I said. Comment down below, he wants to see Call of It beat 7 impossible IRs without using a market of, of so. <laughs> let's bully him into it. I bet, I bet he doesn't want it, but let's just bully him into it. <laughs> and Barbaros is now getting mowed down like a chainsaw, L like with a chainsaw. That pretty much that's pretty much it. He's not gonna come back from this, not with this arm in front of his in front of his gates. And not with his towers not upgraded. As they'd say well fought. 
he did a very very good stun despite not really using his market <laughs> and he did breach a 2 million food mark I'm proud of you man <laughs> It's the little things that count in life. And since the units have stopped fighting, I suppose the Barbaros has resigned or surrendered in this case. Let's have a quick peek at the statistics. Yeah, it's pretty even actually most of the time, except for the end. Well, somewhat even rather. It's not always even, but to a degree. At least in population. The score falls off in the middle and then goes back to being somewhat even as well which is confusing because i, I could well yeah of course and has lost way more men uh economy it's not too drastically difficult uh, not difficult different <clears throat> yeah and has produced almost five thousand light infantrymen that's uh that's a big number but alright, I hope you have enjoyed this replay. And I hope you have enjoyed me blabbering over it. <laughs> and yeah, have a nice day. And uh, bye bye. <laughs>